it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a car using a whole bunch of Lawn Fawn sets, including Porcupine for You, Would You Be Mine, Scent with Love, A Bug Deal, Hive Five, Let's Go Nuts, Critters in the Arctic, Happy Harvest, Party Animal, and Magic Messages. So I've stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm going to start with my Porcupine, and I'm going to go with some darker shades for him. I recently did a card using the Porcupines, and I googled what they look like, just so I would have an idea of where to start. And I saw that they're actually quite dark, so I'm going to use E44, E47 and E49. I'm only adding just a touch of that E49 in the deepest shadow right under the quills because it is very dark. And I also filled in the nose with that shade. And then I'm blending out with the E47. I quickly realized that I was going to need four shades for this one because you can see that right now, even as I'm coloring with the lightest, the E44, that you can barely make out those facial features. So you end up losing all of the cuteness factor of the images. So I'm gonna bring in E43 for the lightest and I'll make sure to bring some of that back onto the face and you can see how that was revealed once again so that you can see even though he's a darker critter I still want him to have that personality you know so I'm going to move on to his quills and I'm going to go slightly lighter for those I'm going to keep the E44 and E43 but add in the E42 and I'll start with that E44 for the base of the quills and then I'm blending toward the outside edge with the E43 and then I'll use the E42 for the highlight at the top of the quills where the light would be hitting it the most. And then while I've got those E40s out, I'm going to continue using them, but just lighten up the combo. I'm going to bring in E40 and E41, and I'll do the mushroom stems by adding a little E42 and then blending out with the E40, and then using a touch of the E41 for the little white spots on top of the mushrooms. Then I'll keep the E40 and E41 and add in the E000 and I'm going to do the white parts of my skunk. So the belly, the top part of the tail and the top part of the head. And I was trying to figure out if I wanted the ears to be black or white, but I decided to do them in the white. I'm also going to do the little breast and face of my owl with the same combo. So just a little E41 to begin, blending out with the E40, and then warming up that combo with the E000, and then letting that fade into the white cardstock so that it still looks white, but has a bit more definition and warmth to it. Then I'm going to move on to the black parts of my skunk, and I decided to go with the neutral grays today. So I'm using N3, N5, and N7, starting with the N7 and placing those shadows down the back side of the body, so on the right for the skunk since he's facing toward the left, and on the underside of the arms, and on the edge of the tail where it connects to the body, and also where it is turned down away from the light. And then I'll blend that out with the N5 and then use the N3 to fill in the rest of the face. The N3 is nice and light, so it does make sure that you can see all of the little facial features. So once I've got him filled in, I'm going to move on to my owl. And I wanted the, each of the critters to have their own color for this particular card. And then I'm going to unify it through the accent colors. So I switched to the warm grays for the owl and I used W1, W3, and W5. A little W5 at the bottom of the wing and the sides of the head and then blending out with the W3 and then filling in with the W1 for a nice highlight at the top of the wing and the top of the head. For the squirrel, I'm gonna do my favorite animal in the whole wide world, which is the red squirrel. I'm going to use a whole range of colors for him. The darkest three shades are for the main part of the body, but I like the belly to be a little bit softer, especially on this particular squirrel because you can see so much of his belly. 
So I'm using E11, E13, E15, E17, and E18. So I started with the E18 and laid in my shadows with that. Then I blended out with the E17. Then I'm gonna come in with that E15 and I'm gonna fill in most of the body, like I said. I'm gonna do the arms, the feet, the hindquarters, the tail, most of the face, but the lower part of the face I left to add in that E13 to kind of transition that area into the belly, which I will use the E11 for. Then I'm going to do my little bird and I decided I didn't want to do a crow because I wanted this to be a springtime card and I felt like the crow might make it seem more fall, especially with the color palette that I'm going with. It could kind of lean in either direction. So I decided to do a robin since they are kind of like the harbinger of spring. So I used E53, E55, and E57 for the brown parts of the body. While I have these markers out, I'm also going to do the wood. So for the skinnier branch, I'm only using the darkest two shades. I laid in some shadow with the E57, and I'm gonna blend out with the E55. At first I was leaving some room for the E53, but there really wasn't much of it there, so I decided to just fill it in completely with that E55, and then go back in with a second layer of the E57 to darken it up. And that would also differentiate it a bit from the Robin. I just wanted it to be just slightly richer in color. And then I'm also going to do the log down at the bottom with this same combo, adding that E57 on the bottom edge. And then I'm gonna do all of the little lines that are drawn in as well to give it that wood grain texture. And then I'll blend out with the other two shades. And while I'm coloring this panel, I'm also coloring the second panel that I showed you at the beginning off screen. Um, just because there were so many images today, I decided to do the other ones off screen to save some time in the video. Otherwise, it would have been almost twice as long. So um, yeah, I'm going to use the same combos on that sheet though as I did on this one. So for the cut end of the wood, I'm going to go a little bit lighter using E50, E51, and E53. And now that I've got all of my neutrals filled in, I can start to add some color. So first I'm gonna go in and do the Robin's breast, but I decided to go with kind of some orangish tones for today. I didn't want anything like super bright red. So I used YR01, YR02, and YR04 for that. And then I also did the little tulip that is up at the top left-hand side of the panel. Then I'm going to darken up the combo slightly, keeping the YR04 and adding in YR07 and YR09. And I'll do both the robin's beak and the owl's beak with those shades. And then I'll also do the gift wrap on the present at the top. I just like to have each of the combos in at least two or three places so that it really pulls your eye around the scene. So then I'm gonna move on to some yellows. I wanted to go a bit more golden yellow, so I'm using Y13 with YR23 and YR24. I'll do the center of the flower and the frosting on the cupcake. Just using that YR24 first and then blending out with the YR23 and then using that Y13 to really warm that combo up. Then I'm gonna move on to some reds, but like I said, I didn't wanna go super bright red. So I chose R12, R14, and R17. They have a bit more of an orangey undertone to them. I'm gonna use those for my um, mushrooms. I almost called them marshmallows, goodness. Um, I did have a little bit of a leak with the R12 marker, so I just took off the other cap to equalize the pressure. And I'm just gonna let that dry and not worry about it. Um, we'll come back to clean that up later on. I moved on to doing my Critter's Rosy Cheeks with R02 
And when I needed to blend it out, I used the R01 as well. I also filled in any insides of ears and the inside of the squirrel's mouth. And I even added a rosy cheek on the robin and the snail. And then I'm going to move on to B000, B41, and B52. And I'll do the ribbon on the birthday gift and then also the wrapper on the cupcake using all three shades. And then I'm going to mix it up for the flower petals. I wanted them to look white but have a bit of definition. So I started with the B52 and blended out with the B000 and then left the white cardstock for the highlight. And then I'm gonna move on to some of my leaves and also the snail's body. And I decided to use YG21, YG23, and YG25 for that. Just the YG23 and the YG21 for the snail's body. But I did use all three shades for the leaf on top of the cupcake. And I'm gonna use just the YG25 for the leaf on the tulip. Then I'm going to switch to G40, G43, and G46 for the stem and leaves of my flower. And I just wanted to have several different greens because there is quite a bit of greenery between the two panels. And then my third green combo is going to be G21, G24, and G28. And I'm going to use that for the large leaf at the top, which is from A Bug Deal. Just using that G20A at the base and up the center stem and then uh, blending out with the G24 and then using that G21 for the highlight. For the snail's shell, I decided to go back to my E40s. I used E43, E44, and E47. At first I thought I might do it in a fun color, but I ended up having enough of those other colors on the scene that I just decided to go neutral for that. Then I'm going to take a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and go over the eye of my robin. And I'll take a white Sakura Jelly Roll pen to fix the little bleed out on my mushrooms. And then I'm going to trim all of these images out with their matching dies. Next, I'm going to choose some pattern paper from the Spiffier Speckles 6x6 pad. I'm going to pull out this softer green with the darker green fleck, and I'm going to pull out the darker green with the gold fleck. I'm going to use both of these. I think they're going to look really nice together. So I am going to trim down the lighter green piece and use that for my sentiment. So I cut that down into a small square. I'm going to pop my sentiment from the magic messages onto that panel and I'm stamping it in Lawn Fawn Noble Fur ink. I decided I wanted to go with a color rather than just stamping in black ink and the green just seemed like the perfect fit with the tones of the um, pattern paper. So I stamped that down twice to make sure it was nice and bold and legible. And then I set that aside and popped my card base in my Misty. I'm using Lawn Fawn Sage Leaf cardstock. And I'm stamping a whole bunch of images and a sentiment from the Party Pals stamp set. So a little fox to tie in the woodland theme and then some confetti along with that sentiment. So I've trimmed down the darker green pattern paper with the gold fleck with the outside in stitch rectangle stackables and I'm going to glue that to my card front. I think all of the shades of green really lend itself to a woodland theme card and with the different shades of green and the leaves I think it just is going to tie everything together nicely. So I'm just lining that up in the center and then pressing that down into place and then the sentiment I trimmed out with the matching die for the Magic Messages stamp set. And then I've popped that up on some foam tape because I want it to have some lift. And I need this to be right in the center of the card. I could always get out a ruler and measure, but that's just not really me. I like to eyeball things. So I just adjusted that a few times until I had it where I wanted it. And now I can bring in my images. So I've added foam tape to the main images that are going to make up this kind of 
oval that I'm going to make, like a cluster around the sentiment. Um, I got this idea from the Little Golden Books. I don't know if you guys remember those, but when I was a little kid, my mom would take me grocery shopping. And I'm talking like toddler age because I was sitting in the front part of the shopping basket. And if I was really good at the grocery store, then I would be allowed to pick out a new little golden book to take home. And so like grocery shopping was my favorite thing ever because I got to get a new book. And the back of the little golden books has like this whole little um, edging of all these different critters from the different books. And that's kind of where I got this idea from for today's card. So I've popped up the main critters and kind of laid out where I want those to go. And then I'm going to fill in all around those critters with all of these accessory images and just make sure it looks really nice and full and colorful and happy like those golden books made me feel. So I can specifically remember there being the saggy baggy elephant and the pokey little puppy and uh, there was a lion, I can't remember his name, but it wasn't only critters, there was also like a train and I think a tugboat. There was like all different ones and it was all like framing the edges of the back of the book. Um, but for today's card, I decided to go with just woodland critters to kind of make it seem a bit more cohesive and just kind of bring the whole card together. So that's why I stamped out all of these characters from all of these different stamp sets. I think this might be a new record for me for the most stamp sets used on one card. I know around Christmas time I did a whole bunch as well. I'm not sure if it was 10. This card is 10 stamp sets. And uh, yeah, I think that might be my new record. And I, I love that though. I love that about Lawn Fawn that the images work so well together. I've got new sets on here. I've got super old sets on here with like the Critters in the Arctic and Happy Harvest is a really old one. Um, the Porcupine for You came out not that long ago. High Five was not that long ago. Um, so it's I think it's fantastic that you're able to mix and match all of these different stamp sets across so many years and still have them work together and look like they belong together on a card. So that's just one of the things that I personally love about Lawn Fawn's images. So like I said, I started with all of my critters and kind of made a circle or more of an oval shape around that sentiment with those. And now I'm coming in with the smaller accessory images and filling in the gaps. Of course, I did lay out my stamps for this card as I usually do. You guys know if you've watched any of my plan a card with me videos, how I like to plan out a card layout and lay everything out ahead of time. But there's always only one stamp of each image. So I can only go so far with a card that has, you know, so many different elements. So some things are going to have to be shifted and moved and... I'm going to use multiples of things where I could only lay out one and kind of guess how many I would need for the rest. So it is a little bit of fiddling around and trying things out here and there and seeing where they fit together. But, you know, the main images that I already have adhered to the card, I had already laid out taken a photo of and knew where they needed to go, which really helped this card come together much quicker because otherwise it could have taken forever with this many images involved. I'm also using a mix of foam tape and liquid glue, just depending where the images are going to be adhered. Um, if it's going to be flat on the card, then I usually did use some foam tape to give it some extra dimension. But if it was going to be adhered over something that was already popped up, then I just used liquid glue. So everything is still on one level, which is going to make it much easier for mailing. 
For the things that I did pop up on foam tape, I used less than I normally would and mainly just put the foam tape in the center of the critter so that I would be able to layer things underneath or over top as needed. So um, I made sure not to cover the whole image as I normally would because I would want it to be super well supported, especially if it's going through the mail. But um, just having a little bit less, not having it under the hands or under the extra branches and stuff enabled me to be able to tuck things around and then they would be supported by the extra images that are underneath them. So I also tried to make sure that no two of the same image were too near each other. I wanted to really spread the colors and the imagery around the scene to draw your eye to different places. So I kept that in mind and tried to really create a very well balanced and visually appealing card. So you can see that, you know, as I place those larger leaves, I did them kind of at opposite corners from each other. Also the daisy style flower are kind of opposite each other. The little mushrooms I did in a bit of a triangle. The pink tulips I placed kind of diagonally across from each other. I made sure that the little pops of yellow were spread around the scene as well. Just trying to keep all of those things in mind as I arranged everything and keep it as pretty and um, as well balanced as possible. That's really the best word for it. I did also place a few of the images hanging over the um, sentiment circle just made sure that they didn't cover up any of the letters so that you could still see what it said but I did want to just incorporate that sentiment a little bit more into the scene so I made sure to have like a leaf and a butterfly and part of the um, cupcake all of that is kind of hanging over the edge including the porcupine and the skunk I think it just helps make everything look a bit more intentional so I added my last little flower up at the top of the scene, but I was a little bit bothered by the fact that more images were close to the top edge of the card than there were down at the bottom edge of the card. It just felt like there was a gap down at the bottom. So I stamped out the little caterpillar from a bug deal and colored that with some of the same shades that I'd already used on the scene. And I'm gonna add that down at the bottom of the card just to pull a little bit of the weight down towards the bottom, if that makes sense, and just make it look like that gap isn't quite so big there at the bottom. Then I'm going to add a bit of Stardust Stickles and I'm gonna put it on the centers of the blue flowers. I'll put it a little bit on the pink tulips and the centers of the daisies. Also on the frosting on the cupcake and the butterfly's wings and the little tulip by the snail. I also put it on the ribbon on the gift and that's it. I didn't wanna to go too far overboard, just have little pops of it here and there. So I'll pick that up so you can see how that catches the light and also with that gold foil detail to that pattern paper. And there is another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun creating it and I think it's something different. It's just a little bit of a different layout from my usual, which is always fun to do. So if you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell if you want to be alerted whenever I post new videos. All of the products I use will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought might also interest you. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.